spits on the audience when he... Right. And then he goes... <laughs> spits on everyone, and everyone's like, yeah! You get that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, that's, a, cool. that's a DD watch for you. Excellent. So who are you guys? Let's I'm, go. I'm Raj Viani. I'm the product kit manager for Windows Marketplace and Electronic Software Distribution. So quick um, two-minute history on this project. Okay. So back in December 03, fall 03, D.D. Walsh contacted me and said, hey, we need to do something about our Windows ecosystem. We need to really uh, give back to the ISVs what have made us as successful as we are today. So I said, okay, how do we do that? And she said, let's build an ESD solution. And I was like, what the heck is ESD? And D.D. goes, I don't know, but let's get it built in 90 days. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so let's figure this one out. So there were two pivotal moments for me uh, when we went out and when we began talking to customers. When we began talking to customers, what we found was the customers were saying, you know what, it's so darn hard for me to find anything. Um, and to make decisions, I have to go to like 9, 10, 11 different websites. Mm -hmm. And then even after I've looked at a product, even after I've been to all these websites, then I have to struggle with, well, is this going to work on my machine? Is, what's the compatibility issues with the hardware? What, what are the compatibility issues with the software? So it's so darn hard mm -hmm. to buy anything and add and augment to the system once I've bought it from the OEM. Sure. So we were like, oh, that's a pretty big pain point. And um, uh, given the fact that we are no longer in circa 1995, here we are in 2003, 2004, and the customers are still having so much trouble finding applications to add to their uh, computers. We mm -hmm. said, that's a big pain point that we think we can do something about. Then we looked at the other side of the equation, which is the ISVs. So mm -hmm. uh, we went out on a listening tour, and we talked to, oh, I think probably 200, 250 different ISVs all over the country. And the key learning for me, or the key moment for me was when we were talking to an ISV in Boston. Mm. And this ISV said, you know, I am the same independent software vendor that I was 20 years ago. Back in 1985, when I wrote an application, I had to worry about not just the core functionality in my application, I also had to worry about all the device drivers and print drivers. and all the other stuff is bloated my application and made it this big. Then came along Windows and psh, magic. I didn't have to worry about any of that. I could just focus on my functionality and take a lot of things as a given. Mm -hmm. Here we are 20 years later, I'm still the same ISV who wants to write cool applications and get them exposed to as broad an audience as possible. And well, what do I have to do for that? I have to figure out how do I be an e-tailer. I have to figure out how do I be a uh, run a hosting service when I'm hosting all the bits. I have to figure out how do I have the um, uh, EDIs, the gateways set up with all the different credit card companies. Mm. Why do I have to do all that? Wouldn't it be great if, if some company like Microsoft could come in and do for electronic software distribution what they did with Windows? That's when the light bulb went on for us. So Didi and I came back after uh, those trips, sat down and talked and said, well, we know exactly what the market needs. We know what the customers are asking for, the end users, and we know what the ISVs are asking for, which is a distribution channel. Mm. So we said, well, we've done this, formed this hypothesis based on conversations uh, in North America. Let's also reach out to our ISVs overseas. So we did a, uh, two trips. We did a trip to Europe and a uh, trip to Asia. Mm -hmm. And when we went out and talked to the independent software vendors in those countries and we said, you know, it's so great that you're writing great applications on the Windows platform. What can we as Microsoft do to help you, to help you make, more, make you more successful? Mm -hmm. The number one thing that we heard from them was, help me sell my applications. Help me get my applications in front of the hundreds of millions of Windows users that you have out there. And we were like, uh, gee, um, yeah, but you are in India, or you are in Thailand, or you are in Germany, and uh, how exactly can we um, help or shed more light on that? Mm -hmm. And the scenarios that they described were, okay, I am writing some really cool applications sitting in Istanbul, Turkey. I want to be able to sell those applications which have something to do with coffee and, and such to mm -hmm. uh, your coffee-loving folks in Seattle. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? 
because today if I want to put it on a uh, shrink wrap the product, put it on a CD and then try to ship it, mm -hmm. there are customs regulations, there is duty, there's all kinds of e-commerce regulations. Sure. Well, if you guys could do that on, on the pipe so I can just send on the bits, that would be great. So we said, we know what we need to do. We need to build a solution that makes it as easy for people to be able to download software as it is to download digital music today. So we said we came back and we said we know what we need to do. Um, went in and did a uh, Bill G review where we talked about the architecture, talked about the approach that we were going to take. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we had um, uh, recruited Sean Nolan, who was the former CTO from Drugstore.com, and um, uh, on the site, an independent software vendor himself. So very familiar with the pain points, and he had helped us blueprint the architecture. And then we said, okay, let's go out and build a team. So we put together a proposal of what it was going to take and um, went up and talked to Tom Button, who was our uh, executive sponsor. Mm. And when Tom Button looked at the numbers of what we needed to get this built, he just locked us out of the room. He said, okay, you guys have, I'll give you one head, maybe two heads. Go build this thing. So we said, with one head, what are we going to do? Mm. So we reached out and we said, if we only had one head, who could we hire? And we reached out. And um, uh, from my old team, there was this individual, Vikram Pambri, who... <laughs> <laughs> so Vikram and I had worked together for, oh, five, six years, and I think it, at that point done 17 or 18 web releases. But Vikram's claim to fame is this guy has consistently, um, all through 17, 18 releases that we had worked together, always brought them in on time, on quality, and under budget. I mean. Nice. Being in the software industry, you know, being able to do it once, twice, thrice is remarkable. Yeah. This guy's been able to do it 17, 18 times. So we wow. said, victims of a man. So he was the one man army that we enlisted and said, come on over and we'll build this whole platform. Cool. Um, and Vikram came in and uh, being pretty realistic about what it takes, he was like, you know what? This is not a one person affair. We really need to uh, build a guerrilla army here to make this happen. So we went back to Didi, who had been a sponsor all along, and said, Didi, we need more. And uh, Tom's not giving us any more heads, so what do we do? <laughs> Didi said, let's try to build a volunteer army. Hmm. So she, in turn, uh, reached out to uh, some of her friends who run a company called Vodigo Software, which is a company in uh, the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So we reached out there, and um, one of those um, fine folks over there is Susan Warren, who is an uh, ex-Microsoft employee. Yeah. So very familiar with the practices from the dev division, you might recall yeah. her name. ASP.NET. That's right, ASP.NET. And um, so we talked to Susan and said, hey, Susan, would you be up for this project? And Susan's first response was, I'm not doing any flying, and I'm not coming back up to Seattle. We're like, don't worry. We'll set up the <laughs> core development team down here in the valley. Um, she goes, well, I still have to fly up for product reviews and I'm not that big a um, uh, fan of flying. She said, you know what, Susan, you can stay right here. When we need to come down and do product reviews, we will come down and meet with you as opposed to having you fly up here. So that sealed the deal with Susan. Excellent. She enlisted um, um, another partner in time, a, a fine young man by the name Matt Hempy. Uh, Max a Stanford comp science guy, just a phenomenal program manager. Mm. So those two became the core of our dev team in uh, California. Excellent. And then we were like, okay, we can do the program management up here. Sean Nolan, of course, is our architect, and mm. he's just an architect uh, extraordinary in terms of the output that he can get and the visionary thinking that we were able to get um, when we walked into the, the Bill G review. So any kind of a review that we had, any technical review, the technical architecture was so solid that people could poke holes in a hundred different directions and we always had the answers thanks to Sean. Excellent. So we had an architect in place, we had a two-person program management team up here, um, a two-person core dev team in California so we still need to be able to do something about testing. As it turns out, uh, there's another individual, a uh, couple of individuals, mm -hmm. Sanjay Jajurikar and Samir Bodas, both of them ex-Microsoft, mm -hmm. who have retired from Microsoft and they have started a new company which specializes in outsourced testing. Mm -hmm. so they, uh, a company by the name Disha Technologies, and they're based out of India. So they became our core test team. 
And the key advantage there, outsourcing or offshoring is a pretty popular term these days. Mm -hmm. But what we were able to do, which gave us a very unique advantage, is we did the follow the sun strategy. So program management in Redmond, architecture in Redmond, software development at Vertigo in uh, California. Mm -hmm. And then our testing was taking place at Pune in mm -hmm. India, which happens to be exactly 12 hours, 12 and a half, 12 and hours, half hours later. Later. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, 12 and a half hours ahead. ahead. But um, so at the end of the day, we would do our builds here. Our testers would pick up the build. Next morning, you come back and you have the bugs filed against it. So we were able to go on a 24 by 5, and in some cases, 24 by 6 cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, and lately, I think it's been 24 by 7 for these guys. <laughs> or 8. Or 8. <laughs> or eight. Wow. <laughs> and so we were able to just accelerate this. And uh, by the time we got to PDC, about a week before PDC, uh, we showed uh, proof of concept demo to Jim Walchin and to Vic Bindotra and Joe Peterson. Mm -hmm. And those guys were ecstatic. They said, you know what? We have to announce this at PDC. Mm -hmm. So in fact, when Jim Alchin um, uh, signed off with uh, uh, his keynote at PDC, he ended the keynote by doing a demo of uh, uh, the developer preview that we announced for the Windows Marketplace Digital Locker. From then on, what we so having launched the core technical functionality, mm -hmm. what we then focused on is putting a user interface, which makes it really easy for users to be able to download things, as opposed to just for the uh, geeks like you and me who will go in there and say, hey, we're early adopters, we want to play with this technology. Mm -hmm. We said, let's really make this a, a very user-friendly interface. And so we began thinking about who's the best guy that we can bring for this job. Mm -hmm. Again, we reached out and uh, uh, found one of our um, uh, colleagues from our old team, Yasha Kekas Wolf, as the guy who has just a phenomenal sense about UI, a phenomenal sense about what makes for a great user experience. So we recruited Yasha as um, originally the one-man band to come in and help us design the UI, Excellent. and then he in turn recruited uh, his volunteer army to come in and build the uh, entire user experience that you're going to see in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So behind all this, the, the focus of the camera needs to go back to where it was initially, mm -hmm. TD Walsh. <laughs> so TD Walsh and Paul Sosfield were the folks who originally had the vision of where we could go with this. Mm -hmm. And then through all this, while we are doing a, a, a startup, we were just busy with our heads in the sand trying to you know just build, build, build. Mm -hmm. Didi Walsh was the one providing air cover and doing the evangelism, reaching out to other parts of the organization, reaching out to analysts in the media, mm -hmm. reaching out to external partners to say, hey, here's a concept, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. And making the refinements as we went along, incorporating feedback, bringing partners on board. So here we are, ready to launch the product in next week. Excellent. And we are up, um, what's the kind of number of products that we have? We're actually close to about 150,000 products. Yeah. Wow. So we are up with 150,000, 150,000 products from thousands of partners, mm -hmm. uh, independent software vendors. Um, uh, 60,000 downloadable. 60,000 of those downloadable, which is, I think, the biggest collection of products that you can find on the web, or one of the biggest collection on it the Windows be, platform. Will, it will be soon. It will cool. be the biggest. It'll be the place you go for any download downloadable product for Windows. So now I'm assuming that uh, part of your process is ensuring that the software actually works, yeah. and and you test, do compatibility testing, you do driver testing, you do all that kind of stuff, right? That is done by our partners actually, but okay. that's part of our deal with our partners is that every single product is loaded, and somebody, mm -hmm. and a real live human being tries it out. Sure. And also, um, the products that we're gonna that we will ultimately emphasize when in the Vista time frame or Vista certified so we'll mm -hmm. be the Vista showcase cool. but right now we also show all uh, design for Windows products so that you can see which have received the logos excellent so, so how, what is this so how does it work what is this thing so we've taught you gave a great introduction well but let's show you the product. what is it let's uh, walk you right into the product and, and, uh, than yeah, so All right, so it's Windows Marketplace. Windows Marketplace. Um, we're actually right. looking at it in our pre-production environment, which will be launched out to the web here beginning uh, Monday. Okay. Um, we, just kind of at a high level, I guess one of the things that we want to emphasize is that from a customer perspective, we really think that there are three pretty significant pain points in finding and acquiring software. Uh, 
Um, they, they kind of broadly fall into the following three buckets. First, we know that it's challenging for customers to come to a website in particular and find a product that they're comfortable is going to work with their Windows PC mm -hmm. and also be comfortable with who they're going to actually acquire that piece of software from. Um, we definitely get that and, and our, our approach with Windows Marketplace is to try and uh, make customers comfortable with both of those two pain points in kind of that general broad area. So as we walk you through the demo, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things we're doing to expose great products that their peers uh, in the customer community are actually helping to expose to them. Past that, when you get a software for download, there are some inherent challenges in getting a piece of software down to your PC. Um, some of those are related to kind of where those particular applications are being downloaded from. Some of them are just because you're using an HTTP download and there's some kind of general inherent flaws with HTTP downloading. Like if you lose connectivity, Absolutely. you're probably going to have to start all over again. Um, so we definitely heard that and we actually will show you what the digital locker um, that is being released with Windows Marketplace will help do to dissuade kind of that from being a challenge for customers. Cool. And lastly, this is kind of the scenario that I think all of us have probably dealt with uh, in the past, and it's something that we really hope the Digital Locker makes it uh, makes it go away entirely. And that's that you probably bought software before online, downloaded it, uh, got a confirmation page that has your license code on it uh, to actually use the product, yep. it, and probably changed computers, or maybe you had some hardware problems and you lost your email. Mm -hmm. And you've actually had to go out and buy that piece of software again. Yeah, um, we think that's a pretty horrible problem, and it's something that we've heard from a lot of customers that are actually going out looking for downloadable products. So the digital locker, in addition to being attached to Windows Marketplace, mm -hmm. giving customers a great view into the right products, the great products that their peers like, mm -hmm. um, allows for easy downloading of software uh, via our partners that we're working with through the digital locker system that Vikram and I are going to show you. But it also has a free service and in the cloud service that you as a customer can always log into that stores all the information associated with every downloadable application that you've acquired through Windows Marketplace. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you also have the ability to upload information associated with any piece of software that you own into it. So the digital locker can really become the one place that you can store all information associated with all pieces of software that you own um, to really take those challenges away from you. Cool. So what you can do is it gives you capability to add licenses out of band. So even if you haven't purchased through the digital locker, you can still add your license into the digital locker. So it becomes the single place, like, you know, to go and look at any, any licensing information mm -hmm. associated with the product or downloads if you have, if there's a download link associated with it as well. Cool. So now the other, the, the other question uh, here before we get too deep into the demo is um, we talked about the uh, other side of the equation. So we have the customers, which are you know obviously important, and then we have the people building the software. So if I'm an ISV, how do I get software on the site? You what do I have to do? It's it's very easy actually. We have a URL. You just go to Windows Marketplace WAC Partner, mm -hmm. and it depends on how you want to interact. We have lots of different ways that you can interact with Windows Marketplace. You can go to download.com and very simply just put you know if you have shareware or something like that just have it go through download.com and then it will enter our feed pretty wow. immediately or you can work through our other partners digital river and folks like that mm -hmm. who are actually going to get the products up there pretty quickly too and then if none of those actually work for you we have a, a email address that goes to a few of us that we can work with you to figure out how to get your product up there if none of those work for Fantastic. you but there's a lot of different options for getting up there cool all right, let's All check right, this cool. thing out. So we'll jump into the demo. Um, we just want to talk a little bit about kind of the, the, the front view that you get for Windows Marketplace as a customer when you come here. I, I don't know if you've spent any time on Windows Marketplace before. Um, I haven't, to be honest um, with you. I so just, yeah, I, I don't buy software. I'll give you it. I work at Microsoft. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right. So I'll give you a quick overview of what the current Windows Marketplace does for customers. Um, it provides a, a big catalog of products, um, but it doesn't do a fantastic job of showing you what your peers are actually purchasing mm -hmm. and bringing that up to areas that are meaningful for you. It's also not a, a really rich, kind of inclusive experience. Um, it definitely doesn't feel like Windows Vista. Cool. Um, the new customer experience that we built for Windows Marketplace is actually what you're looking at here. And, and some of the things you'll start to see when you start to see more and more images of Windows Vista come out is this really rich, organic, kind of visually immersive experience. And we've tried to emulate that inside of Windows Marketplace. And in fact, what we've done with a lot of the way that we program the site um, uh, from a front-end code perspective is utilize CSS uh, in a really cool way so that we can Definitely. render this really well in not only IE7, which we think it, it works perfectly in, but mm -hmm. also in Firefox and in, in other versions of IE as well. So, so it runs in multiple browsers. It does. So your XHTML, you're going to get that kind of feedback from people. It's Are you compliant in XHTML? Is it uh, as much as you can. As do. much as we can. Okay, fair enough. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. And some of the things that we're actually able to introduce here in this particular uh -huh. release is the ability to pull out information that's really specific to 
products that are popular on Windows Marketplace. So we've got this area that we call popular downloads, and this actually is represented in multiple areas uh, throughout uh, Windows Marketplace. And what that does is it looks into the way that customers are using the product, and every time we publish new information to the site, which happens uh, multiple times a day, mm -hmm. the most accurate and recent information about popular products comes to the forefront. And we do that in a lot of different visual ways. We've also introduced this concept uh, that we call Rapid Risers, and Rapid Risers is pretty cool. You'll see some kind of fun hmm. data in here because we're doing some internal testing on it. Rapid Risers actually normalizes information across all of Windows Marketplace. And what that does is it takes the popularity equation, like 5,000 people are buying this particular application this day, out of the equation, and it shows you a brand new product potentially that's just come into Windows Marketplace yesterday, mm -hmm. and a bunch of people are checking it out, and the trend is that it's becoming really cool. Rapid Risers actually brings that up to the top. So it really kind of equalizes the playing field for all ISVs that have products that work in Windows Marketplace. And we cool. do that across downloads, across all software, FPP software, in addition to hardware. So we're pretty excited about that. But um, what we really want to talk about is the digital locker. So Vikram's going to go ahead and jump on the keyboard here, and we're going to right run on. through the purchase process for the digital locker itself. So the Windows Marketplace, kind of this guy. Windows Marketplace, generally speaking, um, had been a spoken hub model. And that basically means that when you find a product that you're interested in purchasing, it'll move you off to the retailer that's selling it site, and then you actually go through the process of purchasing it directly from that retailer. Um, with the Digital Locker, we're actually able to provide all the same great information that you get um, by going to Windows Marketplace today, but also continue a consistent experience all the way through the purchasing process um, using the Digital Locker. So Vikram's actually just navigated off of the the homepage of Windows Marketplace through mm -hmm. to one of the products that we're featuring. Um, so type in quick and easy. Uh, you see here that we have a lot of great reviews already uh, on the site cool. now for these particular products. You've got the ability to sort against them. We also have a lot of really great product detail information and we will have, um, with the partners that we're working with, the ability to expose large images and even multiple images over time. So we're going to continue to work on that to make this customer experience better and better. So all the information that you see over here, the product details, the specifications, all these are provided by the ISV to our partners and they in turn adhere to a XSD format that we've specified across the board mm -hmm. and uh, that's how they give us an XML feed which we pull on a daily basis uh, from, from the partner side. Okay. And just process it into our database and we run some pre-processing jobs which pushes the data out to the production side. Cool. So I also noticed you have an RSS icon there. Definitely. Which, you know, yep. A new one. So I can subscribe to you figure out what's new, what's hot, what's great, that kind of stuff? We've actually what's enabled RSS throughout the entire site, so you can subscribe to RSS on pretty much every single page on Windows Marketplace. Um, what that means is that from the ability to identify a specific product that's sold by multiple retailers and track that individual product, the prices that are associated with it, um, it's really easy to do on a product detail page like the one we were just looking at. Uh -huh. On the home page, you can obviously subscribe to the most popular products in those particular categories. Uh, and in search results, you can even subscribe to search results for your specific queries that you're interested in. So if I'm interested in hot downloads, I can search for that, um, subscribe to the RSS feed associated to it, and we'll constantly update that to you to show you what the hottest downloads are that are available on Windows Marketplace. Very cool. And that, I mean, that's important because when you're running Vista, I can think of a sidebar application where I'm Absolutely. hooking into your RSS and I figure out what's a great window, you know, Vista and it stuff. And it actually app. also open up, cool. opens up opportunity for us to syndicate our data out to anybody who wants to consume it. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, somebody is building a cool small application, they can just directly consume our data and showcase it on their side or their application specifically. Excellent. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. Thanks for calling it out. So at this point, Vikram's going to go ahead and hit buy and download. And at this point, we are going to, to change the model a little bit about the way that, that uh, Windows Marketplace has worked in the past. So you notice here that we actually haven't left Windows Marketplace. Mm -hmm. We've entered into a download shopping cart. In this download shopping cart, there's a couple things that I want to call out before we begin the, the checkout process itself. Mm -hmm. The first is what's here. It's the retailer that you're purchasing from, the name of the product. Um, one of the things that Didi said earlier is that we are working with a lot of different partners to help ISVs sell their products via download. Um, that's particularly important because one of the things we want to call out here is that Microsoft is in fact not the merchant of record. And we'll go ahead and reinforce this again as we move through the process, but mm -hmm. our partners are actually the ones that are selling the products to uh, the end customer. So the end customer has the ultimate choice in whom they want to purchase a product from, and the ISV has the ultimate choice in whom they want to sell their product through. So we think that's a, a pretty cool convenience that's available in this Excellent. Process. So at this point, we'll go ahead and hit checkout. Um, looks like Vikram is already signed in. Uh, we'll just double check here. But uh, one of the things that we think is pretty cool, you'll notice that there are a handful of carrots that are up here. There's actually sign in, then account information, then authorize this order. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll notice that we've gone straight from the shopping cart page straight through to this page, which is the checkout page. And, and you'll see some information that's up here. This is actually Vikram's house if you ever want to email him or 
or send him a, a love letter. Um, the, uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. The, yeah, so yeah. we'll hide that up really quickly here. But the uh, there, you'll see that Vikram actually has some credit card information that is stored with the digital locker. Um, obviously, this makes this purchase process pretty easy for you. So mm -hmm. we've been at the Windows Marketplace before. We've shopped. We've, we've used the digital locker. We've stored some credit card information with it. Vikram's picked a product. He's gone to the product detail page to learn about it. He's hit that he wanted to download it into his cart, or actually purchase and download it. Um, he's actually clicked three times since the front page to get to this product, or to get to this product view, and now he can purchase the product. So we're making it really easy for customers to buy ISVs products, and we'll continue to work on this to make it easier and better for customers, so that mm -hmm. uh, more and more customers are able to buy ISVs products. So as Yasha talked about the fact that, like you know, we are working with our delivery partners. That's what we call them internally mm -hmm. uh, to provide certain specific services that they enable in order to interact with us so that we can purchase uh, the purchase experience is actually under the hoods happening through them mm -hmm. but we are enabling the user interface to provide for a consistent user experience so there are three key things that we don't do as part of the digital locker or as part of Windows marketplace first one is we are not the merchant of record so uh, in this case software store is actually the merchant record mm -hmm. uh, and they're uh, charging the credit card the second piece is we don't host the third-party bits and uh, those third-party bits are actually hosted by software store in this case mm -hmm. and the last piece is the customer support associated with the specific transaction since we did not conduct the transaction mm -hmm. that piece of information is also managed by our delivery partners we do have a very uh, consistent support mechanism and uh, pass off uh, information channels through which we can like you know uh, transfer support over from our side to their side and for end customer it's very seamless cool so i mean that's one, a good point yeah so one more voice over here as this again goes back to the point about the innovative approach that we have taken not just about the product that we were demonstrating for you mm -hmm. but about the product development process so we have worked very closely hand in hand with all of our delivery partners and so this is a great example of what we would call loosely coupled product development between us and the distributor team that we talked about in Redmond in California and in Pune in India as well as with our delivery partner technical teams which have been working with us uh, across at least three different locations Minneapolis, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska and uh, this is a product that's been thought about and being built ground up mm -hmm. reaching out and in partnership with external entities as well as Microsoft so that we can ultimately meet the goals of our software vendors. Cool, so I'm gonna pause this for a second because I need to fix the legs. All right, we're back on. Sorry for the little <laughs> interruption. There, nothing was edited out, everybody. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and complete out the the transaction here uh, to actually acquire this piece of software. So when Vikram hits complete purchase, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, we're actually in the process of real time communicating via encrypted web services to the software store, um, cool. which is Digital River. Uh, this transaction is taking place, so the, the information necessary to conduct the transaction is being handed to them. Um, it's being uh, conducted, and then they're going to hand back to us a couple of really important pieces of information that are going to be represented both in the page that's the confirmation page, in addition to uh, the page uh, that you'll see later on in the digital locker itself. Do you want to talk a little bit about the way that we've set this up? Yeah, so essentially what happens is we have a bunch of uh, secured and encrypted web services that we've enabled with every single partner that participates in Digital Locker. And we use uh, WSC to provide for like you know secure communication across the channels. We also use SSL, and on top of that, we uh, communicate using uh, uh, public-private key combinations, sure. uh, like any secure site that would do. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our credit card quarantine system where we store our uh, credit card information is uh, a, it's a specific patent that we filed uh, through our process and what we've done is we don't we never store credit card information and billing information together in one single place. Mm. They're like stored very separately so that if, if some hacker is able to get into one uh, place, they uh, we make sure that they don't have access to complete information in order to like you know uh, uh, get users credit card information sure good uh, so yeah we have tried hard uh, to like follow our uh, uh, software development life cycle make sure like you know we adhere to all the security processes and uh, go through uh, like you know umpteen number of pen testing uh, make our system to be secure very cool okay i am I'm really psyched about this and about the product that we have. I mean, I just love building software. And this is just such a great opportunity for us to be able to build software 
that in turn will enhance and foster the software partnerships that we have. And at the end of the day, the reason Microsoft is able to offer such a great offering to our consumers is because of uh, the ecosystem, because of the sheer number of ISVs writing all kinds of great applications. Mm -hmm. And what this enables us to do is, right on the Windows desktop, mm -hmm. bring the thousands, hundreds of thousands of applications that are all over the world mm -hmm. within easy access to the consumer. But going back to the earlier theme that I had about uh, how we are developing this product, mm -hmm. yet another innovation that we are doing going forward is, given the luck that we've had with the follow the sun model, mm -hmm. what we are doing now is, instead of a traditional structure where you have a PM dev test in, uh, uh, team up in uh, Redmond and then augmenting that with teams in India, what we are in fact doing is building our core development team of a core development organization mm -hmm. at IDC. So Amit Chatterjee is the one who is going to be leading the team along with a uh, guy by the name Amit Gupta that we just hired. So our core dev team is in India and the PM team here mm -hmm. and we will continue the existing structure that we have with the vendors in California as well as uh, the testing in India. Okay. So what's worked for us is, is a lot of non-traditional approaches and we're just going to enhance and keep taking them to the next level. Cool. Anything else that you want to add to this, Didi? Nothing. Raj really? <laughs> says it so well. Well, it's but, great. Yeah, I just. It's a great so idea. The so we did we finish the selling? Did you guys get the? Did something go wrong? Uh, it, one of the I think it was my credit card which failed. No so, problem. Uh, I'm gonna that happens. That. Shocking. I'm going to try another That's product. a corporate card, <laughs> isn't it? That's my Amex. It's going on. He hasn't done his expense reports. <clears throat> so I'm going to try and buy another product over here. This is is actually, the, are these the cards? So this is uh, particularly exciting. One of the partners we're going to be launching with is uh, direct to drive which is an ID, RGN company, uh, which mm -hmm. means that some of the really cool top titles for downloadable games uh, are actually cool. going to be available when we launch. So uh, Vikram's gone ahead and just, uh, I forgot the product that you just picked up. Uh, City, City of Villains. So he's going out and uh, working with Direct Drive here to, to pick that product up, and we'll go through the download process as soon as this completes here. Cool. And hopefully it does this time, and my credit card goes through. You got to pay the bill. Oh, I did. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so uh, now that we're at the order complete page, we want to call out a couple of things that are important here. Uh, there's, it's kind of broken down into two main areas. It's the top part, which is really about instant gratification, and then there's the bottom part, which is about how I own my product over time. So this top part is really, I want to get the product, I want to download it right away, and that's something we're going to do in just a second. But okay. the other thing we talked about earlier is how you don't really want to lose your license key as yeah. a customer. Um, the license key is actually represented uh, in whatever format the ISV chooses and works with the partner that we're working with um, to show inside the digital locker itself. So in here mm -hmm. we obviously have a 5x5 five five key, it looks like. It's 4x5 four by four by five. Four by five key. 4x5 <laughs> five five key. And that's actually going to be represented inside your digital locker. It's going to stay there forever. And again, the digital locker is a free service for customers. The bottom part is information that's specific to the transaction itself. So it shows that I've just bought this product from direct to drive It shows the name of the product. And there's a transaction ID uh, in addition to the availability to get support. Uh, the mm -hmm. one thing that I want to call about the transaction ID and really this information about the purchase summary is that this is all unique to the individual retailer. So if I as a customer purchase this product and need to get in touch with the customer support group for this particular retailer, mm -hmm. um, this transaction ID is the same language that that, that particular retailer is going to talk. So we're not enforcing anything uh, on top of the ISV or on top of the retailer. We actually work with them to make sure that the process is as easy as possible for them to retail their products and, and ultimately give support for them if they need it. So at this point we're going to go ahead and hit download and when we hit download we're going to invoke the Digital Locker Assistant. Uh, so this is the Digital Locker Assistant. Uh, it is a kind of a souped up download client in addition to a handful of other things. So Vikram can talk a little bit about what it does from a functionality perspective. Sure. Cool. So Digital Locker Assistant is a pretty small C++ app and it's an explicit install in Windows XP. It's about 500k application, so if you're going through the first time purchase experience mm -hmm. and when you're ready to download, it's an MSI that you get to install on your machine and post uh, the first install every time it recognizes that uh, it's there on your machine, it's going to start the download process itself. Under the hoods, what we use is uh, Bits, which is Background Intelligent Transfer Service. Mm -hmm. It's the same technology used by Windows Update to provide Absolutely. for a resilient download if in case like you know you have network disruptions or things like that. And it happens in the background or can you control? It happens, it happens in the background. We can uh, add prioritization to it, sure. but if in case there's a Windows Update, uh, a critical update that's going, that's obviously going to take sure. a high priority over it. Very uh, cool. Uh, 
I mean, it's good to point out because when we were talking earlier. Yeah, it was mentioned that you know HTTP is not necessarily the most the robust way to distribute bits. So this, right. if the connection ends, you create so you created a job when you initialize the download. Absolutely. And then you communicate with the server to know where you are in the bit stream in exactly. case something happens. Yeah. So that's important that yeah. people realize that they're going to get their software if the power goes off. Absolutely. Another thing to like you know notice over here is that uh, what we do is we don't since we are not hosting the bits directly. We make a call from the uh, DigitalOcker system back to our servers, saying that give us a secure URL mm -hmm. to where to download the from, and we get that URL and that's passed back to the DigitalOcker system, mm -hmm. and then we go ahead and create a job. And on top of that, what we also do is we do a hash verification of the bits to make sure that it, the bits that are that are being sent by our delivery partners are indeed the bits that the consumer gets on their machine. So we you previously we were using MD5, now we moved away from MD5 and uh, moving to SHA-2 uh, hashing across the board for all our products. Very and cool. uh, this digital locker assistant is an explicit install on XP, but in Windows Vista it actually is part of the shell, so you don't need to do go through one extra step of installing the digital locker assistant, and it'll uh, the application will just start downloading as soon as uh, you are in Vista and you click on download. Excellent. Yep. So just to reiterate uh, again, if I, you know, at Channel 9, we have a lot of developers that, that visit the site, and some of them are really small ISVs, right? Like, they work in their garage. So, you were mentioning shareware. So, I could just create, I could write a really cool app, and then rather than putting it in the, in the sandbox on Channel 9, because I really want to get lots of people to use it, I could actually come and put it on That's this our place. goal, is that we will have more and more Windows applications, particularly for when Vin Windows Vista comes out, that there will be thousands and thousands of applications available for Windows that can do anything you can think of. Cool. So, this opportunity for everyone. Good. So, so we'll we, we have more stuff here? On yeah, the we demo? have a couple more things that we'll show sure. you. Um, there are some other cool features that are available inside the Digital Locker Assistant that we want to call it really quickly. And uh -huh. I'll actually show you the Digital Locker itself, kind of the namesake of this particular part of the product that we're talking about. So when Vikram uh, hit this product, which is uh, Hitman Blood Money, that he's already downloaded, you'll actually see that he has the ability to go ahead and install this application directly from here. Um, we work with a, a bunch of different kind of installers files to actually kick it off directly. And some of them, um, like the one that we just saw, will actually open up a folder. Cool. This one. So, kicks off the install directly from the Digital Locker system. So you don't need to worry about where my application is stored. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about uh, can I go find it and then click which file to click to install. Everything happens directly through Digital Locker system. Excellent. And um, the other thing that is kind of cool in here too is that we know that there still is a desire to have a physical backup sometime of the bits that you're downloading your application. Mm -hmm. We actually communicate with the native burner in Windows Vista. Uh, and we do this with Windows XP as well to allow you as the customer using the Digital Locker Assistant to go ahead and burn a backup of your disk and we drop an auto run INF file on top of it to make it really easy for you to deal with when you drop that disk back in to start your install. Nice. So the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to move out of this client application. We're going to move back up into the Digital Locker and we'll show this to you really quickly um, and kind of wrap up the demo piece. So the Digital Locker is really comprised of, of three primary areas. Um, those three primary areas are as follows. First, it's a listing of all the software that, that you own, that you've purchased. Um, this is the stuff that you purchased through Windows Marketplace uh, using a Digital Locker in addition to anything that you decide you'd like to add yourself, which is available right here, which is kind of findable and, and pretty easy to deal with. Um, and here, again, a lot of that same information that we saw on that confirmation page is represented, and this is what persists for the customer over time. Uh, so we want to make it really easy for you to own software as a customer, uh, and we want it to make it really easy for that customer to get that application back if they ever need to get it back, and for them to communicate with the ISV if they need to communicate with the ISV. So we'll scroll back up to the top, and we'll navigate over to um, kind of our, our next page, which is our purchase history page. Our purchase history page is I mean, obviously, as a, not obviously, but it is as it sounds. Mm -hmm. It is a representation of every application that you've purchased, every transaction that you've completed via Windows Marketplace using Digital Locker. The last view that I'll show you is the profile view, and then we'll touch briefly on what the archive is. Um, your profile view is the area where you've got the ability to control kind of the configurability of the way that you purchase. So it's not mandatory to store your credit card information with the Digital Locker. We think it's a cool feature and a, a great convenience, but it's not something that we're mandating anybody to do. So you've got the ability to add, remove, uh, modify any information associated with your transactions here. You can change the emails that you get confirmations. Um, you can even use the this file save as utility in the browser if you really want to. We think the digital locker system's great. I think there's a lot of value in it as we just talked about, but mm -hmm. if you really want to use HTTP, absolutely go for it. Um, the last view uh, that we can talk about really quickly and just end up the end up the demo is the archive. And Vikram doesn't have any archive, but um, 
there is the potential for somebody to purchase a lot of software. Vikram and myself maybe are, are a couple of those cases where we have hundreds of software applications that are in our own digital lockers today just through testing. Um, some of them are particularly important to us, like we just got the coolest game, I want to make sure the coolest game is the one that I see. Um, mm -hmm. And all the other products that I don't necessarily want to see every time I log into my digital locker, I can put in my archive. So it's, mm -hmm. instead of getting rid of it, there's still a representation of it, we keep it there for you, and you can bring it back into your digital locker from the archive pretty easily as well. So, that was, uh, I guess, about 10, 15 minutes, but that's the Digital Locker um, yep. and Windows Marketplace, and we're really excited about both of them. Uh, so the, the public release is this upcoming Monday, the 28th. So Perfect. Good to get out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about it. I mean, this is fantastic. I think the last thing that I'll add is um, one of my mantras about product development is a happy team builds a happy product. Now, you can almost look at the product and reverse engineer the state of the health of the team is mm. um, my philosophy, having looked at uh, and worked on several different products. And I think our, our team, should I tell these guys the mantra, the secret that we have? I think we huh. are too. <laughs> so the secret sauce that we have is, anybody who comes to work on this team, anybody who interviews on this team, we basically have them write a dream job description. And you go, what the heck is a dream job description? Mm -hmm. The test is very simple for a dream job description. Mm -hmm. What's a job that you'd want to do for no pay, no title, no extrinsic motivation, shout out, shipping great products. Mm -hmm. And anybody who signs up for that gets that. The reason we call it a secret is we of course haven't told our boss Joe Peterson about it, that hey, <laughs> we'd be willing to do this job for free, but uh, uh, we truly find it to be so much fun that we say, you know what, it's hard to believe that we get paid to build this kind of cool software. It's great. It's awesome. I mean, and the other thing is if people can't find great software, then it won't get used. So as a developer, I want people to use my software. Exactly. So we're making it easy. I mean, and that's not, I mean, that's the marketing kind of talk, right? right. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, if I'm a developer, I don't like marketing in the sense that I don't want to deal with it. I want my product to go out the window and to have Microsoft market my products for me because that's really what you're doing. Exactly. It's right. a wonderful, amazing thing because we have great marketing and great market share. Well, this the, is great stuff. The slogan that uh, Didi has used in the past that I want to end up with is, this is one small step for Microsoft, one giant leap for the software world, for ISVs. Okay. <laughs> you correct me. <laughs> he just makes this stuff up. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I can tell. No, that's good stuff. Well, it's great to meet you all. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Charles. Thank you thank for you. creating this uh, really awesome site and software. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you.